So, hi everyone. My name is Omar, and uh, today I want to talk to you guys about a project I've been working on, along with my colleague JC and a bunch of other fine folks. Uh, we want to talk about the project called Scikit Build, uh, which we have here in our title, Built System Generator for C, Python, C extensions. And uh, if that's not entirely clear what we're talking about. Hopefully it'll be more clear as we start talking uh, and getting into the details. <clears throat> right, so uh, one question that uh, just in case you might have uh, is about whether C extensions really matter. I mean, you could do a whole lot with just Python code. Um, and we did uh, some stats looking at packages on Python wheels. It uh, looks like a uh, slide's not fully rendering. Oops. Oh, right, sorry. <clears throat> right, so we looked at uh, 360 of the most downloaded packages just from what we saw on pythonwheels.com. We noted about 34 of them uh, all depend on platform specific packages. So, uh, <clears throat> You know, uh, using this as maybe a proxy metric for some of the most uh, commonly used Python modules, I think you can say probably around one out of every 10 of them are, are needing platform-specific extension modules. So definitely uh, these sorts of things are important. It's not like this is a corner case, use case, uh, that's uh, <clears throat> only serving a niche select of uh, a selection of uh, functionality. It's something that we need to focus on and make sure that we do it really well and not just do it well but make the whole process easy uh, both for package authors and for users of those packages. <clears throat> uh, so this is just a little word cloud we put together of some of those uh, big packages that we found. Uh, JSON being really popular. Everyone likes JSON. Uh, but you also see we've got a lot of uh, uh, the usual suspects, uh, we see NumPy, Impillo, Matplotlib, SciPy, a lot of the sta SciPy stack is all there. Um, so there's, there's, a lot that, there's a lot going on here that we want to be able to support really well uh, as far as the packaging infrastructure goes. <clears throat> so uh, these sorts of things are going to have uh, impacts. Uh, one of the observations we make here is setting up a project with compiled modules is tedious. Um, I think that's maybe putting it a little charitably. Uh, and these, these tend to, to impact uh, your everyday work, whether you're uh, the guy who's just writing the code, or you're maintaining a, a project, um, or you're just the user who's trying to pip install XYZ, and uh, you know, maybe the process doesn't just work perfectly the first time. You know, uh, ideally, we'd like to be able to improve that situation. So I want to present uh, our project, Scikit Build, uh, which uh, is a reliable and easy way to package your compiled Python projects. Um, I'll tell you a little bit, uh, before we get too far into the details there, I'll tell you a little bit about some of the a uh, quick review, like a little history lesson on uh, what's going on with Python packaging. Um, get into some of the motivation about why we were doing this work. Uh, and hopefully convince you all that uh, we have uh, <clears throat> a need here that uh, Scikit Build will be, uh, we'd like to address with our project Scikit Build. And then I'll hand it over to my colleague JC, who will get into more of the details about Scikit Build itself, how it works, and uh, maybe show you guys a few demos. So we had first distutils, um, which you know they put together for CPython. Um, it was always from the get-go. Uh, just meant to, to help to build CPython um, and not really much else. And as it turns out, it tends to be great for that and not much else. Um, just actually seeing here on, on the doc page, we can see it's indicated it's a legacy, legacy software. A lot of very common use cases that disutils uh, don't really handle and they never really tried to handle. And so we've had a lot of other projects try to spring up um, to try all try to approach addressing some of this uh, use cases that Disutils wasn't handling. 
And uh, so now we've got setup tools, which has been the current de facto standard for a while. Distutils 2, um, which I'd, I might put a question mark next to that. I don't even know what's, what's going on with that. It's supposed to be a fork. Yeah, I see a thumbs down. Yeah, that's, that's what I was reading when I was checking up on the mailing list and such that, uh, you know, they, they tanked that. Um, and a bunch of others uh, that are probably too many to, to name individually. <clears throat> but there was a lot going on uh, as far as folks all trying to uh, address what is what must clearly be a lack in, in use case coverage. Here we looked at just some trends about setup tools and disutils. And this again just echoes the story that I'm talking about, about what was going on with the packaging world. We see disutils, it's the, it's the big, was the big thing when it was the only thing that we had uh, for C Python and then as setup tools uh, started, started to spring into prominence, we see interest in disutils just falling off. Um, but it's not all negative. I don't intend for this to really be a negative message because really the important thing I want us to take out of all this is that we've had a lot of time that was spent with a lot of folks working on these sorts of problems and we've had a chance to learn a lot uh, from that work that we've done. And uh, so even now we've got a bunch of uh, new standardization efforts uh, that are coming out of these uh, lessons learned. <clears throat> um, just uh, three peps here that, that we've highlighted. Um, I'll highlight in particular the, the wheel binary package formats, the basically the big packaging format that we're going with now for binary uh, packages. <clears throat> And then there's also the addressing the, the issue with specifying requirements in executable code, which is, uh, has its own problems. So there's a PEP 518 to try to address that. And a lot more. Uh, so you can check out the, all the list of the PEPs if you really wanted to get into the, into the nitty gritty of the standardization. <clears throat> and just real quick, I'll just touch on some of the terminology uh, that we'll be using throughout the talk just to make sure that uh, we're all on the same page. Uh, if we talk about source distribution, distributions, we're talking about really uh, mo just plain source files, uh, no binaries or, or binary artifacts that are built from any sources provided. Um, these are typically packaged tarballs that provide some metadata and mostly source files that our current tools like PIP will be able to use for installing um, from the source. Uh, and then from there, or we can use it to uh, build from the source to generate another distribution we call built distributions, <clears throat> which provide the metadata plus source files. I don't think that's actually right. Oh, I keep seeing a different version of the slides on my, mach on my machine. Yeah, it provides metadata pre-built files. Um, so these are the binaries and such. Uh, the idea with these is the only thing you need to do to install them is just move the files and copy the files over to the right places in the, in the target file system. <clears throat> and in particular, when we say binary distributions, uh, we refer to a specific sort of built distributions that include platform-specific compiled extensions. So built distributions that are uh, not universal, that'll be, you know, just for Linux or particular uh, version of Windows. And when we talk about wheels, I think probably most people here know uh, wheels. Uh, it's a built distribution format introduced in PEP 427 and basically the big standard that we want to uh, stick with. Uh, we've had eggs for a little while and uh, I don't think we're sticking with that. Wheels is the is the way forward. And a lot of what we want to do with scikit-build make it really easy for you to uh, build your codes in a way that uh, makes the wheel generation process automatic. Uh, we can, might talk about some Python distributions and uh, we make the distinction between pure distributions which are not specific to a CPU architecture and don't have ABI. Uh, <clears throat> You know, they're not uh, pegged to a certain ABI. And then the non-peer version is the, basically the opposite of that. So with our current tools, uh, we observe that 
they handle a lot of the common needs, uh, but they leave a lot to be desired. Uh, a lot of them are sort of designed primarily with the focus of handling the packaging uh, requirements. Um, and then to handle the, the, the compilation side of things, they do like their own system or their, their own hand-rolled system. And it's, you know, the, the, those kinds of systems aren't going to work for quite as many use cases or quite as well as a solution that, say, is developed exclusively for the purpose of handling the compilation of your codes and the building of code. Um, so one of the things we were thinking of is if we can tap into uh, what we currently have in the Python ecosystem for handling the packaging side of the solution and then bring to bear um, some of uh, what we've learned about handling the, the build systems and the compilation side of the, uh, side of the problem. And so our, our primary observation is when you consider uh, a number of requirements that, that we have to reckon with, like needing to be, to be able to reliably build native codes, um, needing to create extension modules for Python scripts. Uh, we want to be able to, uh, if we so choose, dynamically or statically link extension modules for use in embedded applications. Uh, if we wanted to, say, skip the interpreter entirely, <clears throat> uh, handle all the compiling, packaging, and publishing uh, you know, complications and details, and when, when you're looking for something that does the, all these things and do it in a way that's all integrated with the current Python ecosystem, including first-class cross-platform support and cross-compilation capabilities, you know, you have like all these requirements that you sort of stack up together and it's, it's our observation that there's not really anything out there that handles all of these things in a really well integrated way. Uh, We've got a lot of tools that <clears throat> are available if your requirements aren't quite so restrictive. Uh, or you can, you know, you've got stuff that does packaging really well, but then the compiling extension modules, maybe that's fine if you're doing just regular uh, dynamic uh, modules. But now if you need cross-compilation or, or statically linking stuff, then things get really tricky really fast. So, the driving argument that I want to make for the rest of this talk and the central sort of central thesis that I want to submit to you all is the idea that there is a clear need here for a cross-platform building and packaging solution that supports projects that use compiled modules as well as the users of those projects. And so with that thought, I'll hand it over to JC to tell you about our project. Thanks, Amal. I'm excited to be here. I got my packaging hat. I mean, not really, but yeah. Uh, and my boat uh, socks. I mean, I, I, it's, it's great. Um, OK, our solution is scikit-build. What is scikit-build? It's a packaging solution that bridges the gap between CMake, C++, and Cyton project and the Python ecosystem. Um, and you, also, you, you will be able to build a Fortran code. What is CMake? What are the benefits? Uh, it's open source, well maintained, and supported. Support cross platform build with support for cross compilation, system introspection capabilities, support for native build system, Visual Studio, any version you name it, Ninja, Makefile, um, generation of your build system, and uh, opening your, your solution in Eclipse, in Xcode. Um, and that's like for the development to make your development easier. Uh, support for native build system, and then obviously Python extension module support. What what's the current landscape uh, to to build a C C++ uh, application? Um, we had configure auto tools auto make. Um, successful in the early 2000, and then, uh, and then CMake started to, to come into the scene, uh, initially created to, to be able to build um, big libraries like ITK and VTK, Imaging Toolkit and Visualization Toolkit in a cross-platform way, 
And uh, 15 years ago, when, when we started, uh, nothing existed, and, and that's where um, CMake was created. The intent is really to have a, a declarative uh, way of doing project. Um, I think now we, we are mostly there. And, um, and here we can see the trend, uh, if that means anything, on, on Google Trend. And, uh, and the yellow line uh, go down, the CMake one go up, and that's also why I took the, the screenshot. Uh, <laughs> you know, I mean. Um, and if you want to play with that, that, that small um, chart, you can click on the button. Okay. Um, what is Scikit-Build? It's a drop-in replacement uh, for setup tools. You write your setup.py, no setup tools extension, no build extension required. You write your CMake list for your extension modules, and then you call Python setup.py uh, bdist wheel or, or build or any of the usual target or sdist. Et voila. That's it. No. <laughs> What scikit-build is not, it's not yet reinventing the wheel. It's not um, a new paradigm. It integrates with existing tools. We are not trying to, to write um, a build system uh, management. And it's not um, a replacement for Canopy, Conda, or PyPy. It does not manage packages. It only makes building them easier, meaning it will integrate with any of these um, Python distribution or system. It's not magic, I wish, but no. Um, you are still compiling extension modules, uh, but only with much less guesswork. OK, um, the hello example. And here we have a hello folder, and inside that folder, we want to, uh, to, um, to compile um, a small um, C++ extension. And what do we need? We need uh, the setup.py, the, um, the usual things. Um, and then we have our, um, our package named hello. And then we have the source and, uh, and any.py. OK, what's the content of the, of the setup.py? Pretty simple. Um, it's the same. The only um, things you're going to have to add that I forgot here is the from scikit build import setup. It means instead of importing a setup function from setup tools, you import it from scikit build. Oh, yeah. My screen doesn't show me the same thing as you can see here. That's why I was confused. Um, but yeah, you have the from scikit build import setup here. And then um, how do you actually build? Um, that small um, lo.cxx. Um, you have a CMake list. Uh, CMake list is a way of declaring your, 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 um, your compiled project. Um, you give a name, version, you uh, require some, some, uh, some dependency. We require Python. We require, um, and we provide Python extension module within scikit build. It means that's going to give you uh, this small function like Python extension module. They're going to take care of, um, of building things statically or shared, depending on, the, uh, on how you want to reuse that project. But in the context of, of building a wheel, you're going to do a shared library. And then you add an install rule, and you install in the hello package. And, and that's, that's, all, all, that's all you need um, in that file. Um, you put that file at the source of your project. Then you invoke the, um, the setup.py um, bdist wheel, and then you're going to get a wheel. OK, and what can you do? Like Now, if you have the source uh, of your CMake list in a different folder, not at the root, if you want to install the project, like um, relocate the project, if you want to you have an existing project, you want to graft it in a wheel, um, you want to pass some option, um, like in, if you have your regular C++ project, and then you're like, hey, when I build it in a wheel, um, the context is going to be a little different. It means you can pass um, option with CMake args, and you can specify a source there and an install there. Um, and then you can also, um, from the command line, if you're experimenting um, or building on, on, um, on continuous integration platform, you can specify a 
CMake option, and you can also propagate down a build tool option, uh, like dash J8, uh, if you use make. And uh, that's uh, what the command line will look like. Okay, now we're gonna look at a free example, uh, a pure, uh, a pure, um, a pure um, uh, project. Then uh, Hello gonna be uh, the one uh, building the, the C++ uh, extension, and then Hello uh, Cyton. And I'm gonna just um, open my terminal and build uh, this demo. Is it big enough? No, I'm gonna make it bigger. Come on, guys. Uh, and do I know how to do that? Preference, edit. Oh, does that work? I don't have like the usual GNOME terminal. Yeah, awesome. Cool. Okay, I'm in the test wheel. It means we're gonna go in the PyData um, demo. We're gonna go at the root. We're gonna clean to make sure we start from a clean plate. Okay. And what do we have here? We have um, hello, hello, Cyton, hello, pure. Let's just go into hello, pure. And um, yeah, it's tricky things that I don't see. OK, here I am. And I have the hello set up the py. Uh, this one is pretty simple. It just doesn't build any compile extension. Uh, it just do the from skb import setup, and just to show you that even if you don't build extension, it still work. Uh, it means set up uh, bdist dash wheel, and here we're gonna get a wheel, and then we can uh, go uh, install that wheel. Um, but I will install the the one with the the C plus plus extension. It's gonna be more fun. Um, okay, now let's go in the hello. One. And in the hello, we have the uh, same thing as I uh, described earlier. I'll set up the py of CMake, and here I do set up the py bd And you're going to see a bit more stuff here. And if you go up, uh, we see we detect uh, the platform. Do we support, like, um, is the compiler supported? And then we start to build the project. And Configuring the project, building the project, great. We got our lo.so, and then we install the project, and then it's copying files around to make sure things are consistent, and then it's creating the wheel. Let's, um, let's install that wheel now. ls dist. OK, I got the wheel. Now I go in my pi des, uh, pi, um, in my test wheel uh, environment. Uh, I make sure I don't have any uh, lo. I guess. Uh, pip and install. Hello. Yes, I don't have anything. And then pip install. Um, and I go uh, into this and I install the wheel. Great, wheel is installed. I make sure to go in a different folder to import the right things, and uh, now I'm gonna go in my test wheel folder, and I'm gonna run the hello uh, script that I'm gonna test, and I see hello you, and what's the content of that things? It's just uh, import hello uh, dot underscore hello, which was our shell library as me, me dot hello you, great. And now let's, uh, Let's uh, uninstall it, and let's install the, and when we uninstall, we can see all the file, and we can confirm it's uninstalling as yes, the shell library also. Yes, and now let's build the Cyton one. Uh, Cyton one is a little bit more tricky, as you would expect. Uh, here we have a, a top-level CMake list that includes one more thing. Yeah, I see that time. One more thing. Um, here we include the Cyton uh, package that provides us with all the, the convenience uh, function to, um, to invoke Cyton, generate the source, and etc. And now if you go in the hello Cyton folder, we're going to have our PYX file. 
and uh, for the people who are not familiar with that, uh, hello pyx, uh, with our site and uh, site and declaration, and then we have our CMake list, and here we have a add site and target, that's the function provided by our site and module that generate the source in the source variable. Then we add um, an, a library, it's a module with the source, and then we declare it as a Python extension module. And that's gonna add some, depending on the context, it's gonna have some, some flag um, specific to the platform if you're on Mac, on Linux, um, to do weak linking and so on. Uh, it takes care of all of that. And then you install the, the target in the, in the hello site and folder. And um, to give the com some context, the setup.py is also very simple. Name hello site on, and then the package hello site on. That's pretty much. Now I'm going to build it. Uh, BDist, I guess I can go in the story. Yes. And now I am uh, building the wheel. And uh, you have the build artifact, hello siteon.so that was uh, gener um, generated, uh, build using the source that were generated with Cyton. And now we can go and install uh, the wheel. Uh, let's make sure I don't have a pip and install hello. It's not there. Pip and install Cyton. It was there. It means I remove it. And now I do a pip install of the wheel. Uh, and um, by Carolina, uh, where's that? Hello, Cyton, dist, and we install the wheel. Wheel is installed. I run my test. Uh, hello, underscore Cyton. Yeah, hello, you. Uh, the best example ever. Uh, hello, Cyton is doing the same thing. It's importing uh, hello, Cyton, and calling the me uh, dot hello, you. Great. Um, we, we saw this like small, simple project. Now, can we do more complex project? And um, this, this few things, I was like, let's, uh, let's, can we create a wheel of CMake? Because ultimately, you will want to, um, to pip install CMake, which is a dependency. Um, and you want to be able, uh, moving forward, to uh, install any version of CMake in your uh, virtual environment and not just rely on what's installed on the, on the system. And, uh, and uh, create a small. Uh, a small project, uh, which uh, I need to find the name. Yes, here. And what do we have here? We have um, our usual uh, set, usual, not so usual, but uh, setup.py. And here, what do we have? We have the name of the project. We see some option, and because by default, these options are not enabled or disabled, it means for our distribution, we want to explicitly disable testing, enable OpenSSL, disable curse, install the dependency. These are uh, project specific. And then, what do we have? A package um, named CMake. It means you will do import CMake. And then there is the source there. Because in my small project here, I don't have the source of CMake. The source is going to be grafted into that tree. I download them in the source folder. And then I have the install there, which is CMake data. It means I will install the CMake project under the data folder of the CMake package. And that's pretty much description, classifier, usual things. Now let's look in the, uh, under the CMake uh, init file. What do we have? Here we have a pretty basic things where we just set this like uh, constant, which are the rel relative path to data bin, data doc, data share to be able to invoke CMake. Um, ultimately, we will add um, a wrapper script in the in the bin folder. And I'm gonna uh, now try to um, build the wheel. Um, Let's make sure there's nothing in this folder. Let's delete. And let's do the usual setup uh, bdist wheel. And OK, now let's say I don't want to use make. I want to use ninja because it's installed on my machine. If you do dash g ninja, um, or you could do, if you pay attention earlier, dash dash g ninja, where you pass the option to CMake, but for convenience, we, we automatically pass this one. And I do that, and it doesn't work because I don't have scikit build installed uh, here. It means I need to <laughs> deactivate and do a work on um, work on a CMake Python distribution, which is my environment where I build uh, the project. And now 
I do the G Ninja, I am building. And it turned out that my build tree was already uh, created. It means you didn't see uh, anything happening, but I will delete the build tree uh, of the project. And now I run again, and it's configuring the project from scratch, and there's like all the introspection I was talking to you about, uh, because we build CMake with CMake in that case. But the, all the introspection that, that happened on, on the system to check, hey, do I have all the things required? And in like uh, two seconds, they're gonna start building using Ninja and gonna be like a minute or less to, to build. And yeah, here we can see it's building up 200 on 500. It's going pretty fast. And then, and then, and then, and then. Yeah, that's cool now. Um, yeah, and it won't work, uh, no. And the next step is gonna be to, um, Set up the wheel building on many, many Linux, uh, or many Linux, um, uh, so that we have an of official uh, wheel you can install on Linux. Same thing for Windows, same thing for Mac. And, and waiting that's finishing, I'm gonna go on uh, the what's next. What's next for the project? Support pyproject.tumble, which is uh, um, a declarative way of specifying, uh, instead of your setup.py, you have your pyproject.toml, uh, roughly, it's a pep 516. Um, more documentation and example project. Integrate into other project. Um, I promise uh, Anthony to uh, update the py, py, uh, py any build system uh, to um, use it. Uh, Matplotlib, we are looking into that. Sim engine and few other ones. And and that's gonna be the thank you. That's the repository to, um, to check the source code. And if you just look at it, I'm pretty much on time here, and then you're gonna do the import install of the wheel. We have um, the package. The, um, our requirements are outdated. They are outdated every day. Um, and then uh, all the bills are passing on the free platform. Code coverage 90%, we have uh, something like 100 tests. And okay, I got the wheel. I got the wheel. It's gonna be a song. Um, and then, and then we, we, we have the wheel here, I'm gonna install it. Uh, let me just go here. Uh, I'm gonna install it in that random environment here. Um, pip install. I'm tired. Um, uh, CMake, Python, distribution, dist, and the wheel. And I'm installing the wheel, whoa, it's done. And then, and then Python, look at that. Import CMake, and then what do we have? Uh, I forgot what do we have. <laughs> Dear CMake. Okay, the bin there, and then if you do import the process, you know, the, as a sub process, and then you do uh, sb check call, um, and cmake dot that things, plus uh, dash dash vers version, and then you do a shell equal true, uh, don't do that at, at at home, uh, it's not good. It's not safe. Uh, it's better to give the array. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you. I told you it's not magic. Yeah, and now we invoke CMake. It means we have a wheel, we have CMake. Um, voila. Voila. Uh, any question? Yeah. We have time for one question. I have five minutes. Uh, if the there are any way to build multiple configurations of uh, binary extension at once, and if there are any way to add additional words to the uh, wheel name as plus MKL for NumPy? Uh, anything you can do with setup.py to, to modify the name of your, uh, of your, um, of your wheel, we will pass through the option. We are not doing anything on the, on the wheel name yet. It means that's the default 
option you use with setup tools, you will be, you will be able to do it. Yeah, and to the first part of your question, the answer is yes. Uh, we can main, you can maintain uh, multiple uh, configurations, actually arbitrary number of configurations in parallel. It's just uh, as far as labeling the wheels that you create from those, it depends on whatever we get upstream from the packaging, from the Python packaging, uh, you know, uh, software. So that might be like a PEP or something, if you want to extend that. Yeah. Uh -oh. Sorry. Uh, can I? I'm good. Okay. Um, so I think the litmus test for me is whether you can get NumPy to switch over to this. And NumPy does some crazy things to distutils. And so I'm, I'm actually pretty curious because you're also yeah. sort of replacing distutils. So yeah. what the, how, how does that interaction work and what... Uh, like, if, if you need to use NumPy's distutils and you also want to use scikit build, like, what's, what's the story there? Another, like, a good use driving use case, one of my pet projects is to, uh, to, uh, to switch the NumPy build system and SciPy. Uh, I already did that for uh, Python, for CPython. There's already a build system and you can cross-compile cross it to uh, any platform. That was, like, the first uh, step. Uh, learn a lot doing that, and uh, step two and step three are going to be NumPy and SciPy. Because I face this problem like every day. I need to build on like more exotic platform. Yeah, yeah. It's a pain. And uh, yeah, that's it. And the, uh, yeah. <laughs>